Hello, welcome to Nocti by Kali JNS. And today we continue with the Black American series. We are on part 13. And we're going to just briefly cover uh, education and enrollment. You know, education, enrollment, and Black Americans history. So as we know, in the mid-19th century, uh, HBCUs, which are historically black colleges and universities, were created to allow black Americans opportunities for higher education. Uh, and this is big in the South because, you know, the South was segregated. So in many states, the HBCUs were the only accredited institutions in which black Americans could earn you know, undergraduate and professional degrees. And by the 1940s, nearly all black college students in the U.S. were enrolled at HBCUs. The 1944 GI Bill uh, included education benefits, which gave payments to cover tuition expenses for vocational schools and undergraduate programs for all veterans who had been on active duty. And obviously, so many were black American. However, in practice, a lot of racial discrepancy hindered the dissemination of these benefits, but some black Americans were able to take advantage of some of the benefits. So the increase in black academic enrollment following World War II uh, put significant capacity and funding pressure on HBCUs, forcing them to turn away high value of uh, qualified applicants. And then by uh, 1946, only 20% of black Americans who had applied for education benefits were able to enroll in colleges. In 1980, uh, President Jimmy Carter signed an executive order to ensure equitable funding for uh, public and private HBCUs. However, the funding for public education at all levels continued to be a complicated issue, uh, which obviously affected low-income communities in horrific manners and particularly the black American so we're going to talk about um, integration in education so now we have like a, a brief understanding of the HBCUs and the funding we always we always say oh HBCUs are underfunded or they don't give good financial packages which is why or scholarships which is why a lot of black Americans do go to PWIs and Ivy League institutions because um, it's not that we don't value schools or you know HBCUs a lot of us really I apply to many actually HBCUs in Atlanta of course Howard you know we all uh, wanted to do go you know they had that dream to go to Spelman and Morehouse or Howard or Clark you know and Hampton we all had those dreams but when we got that financial package and we saw that they that we basically had to pay out of pocket we talking about you know 50,000 a year and shit including a uh, room and board it just was not feasible uh, and uh, that that's due to the underfunding that's due to them uh, shitting on uh, the HBCUs in terms of, 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 of even of scholarships like there should have been something in place for the black American to go to the HBCUs that, that should have just been protected just like how the Native Americans got certain shit we should have had something like that for the HBCUs where shit y y the government gonna subsidize the tuition for all black Americans to go to HBCU and that would have eliminated a lot of this bullshit with the the, the, the racism on at PWIs and even uh, with it, which I would say is it's crazy at the Ivy League level you know as far as the microaggressions and the, and the racism that you will face in um, Ivy League institutions um, it's getting better like some some Ivies are better than others but it, it, it is still you can you 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 will feel like oh you don't belong here and it's like motherfucker you know it, it, it's just it's complicated and I guess black Americans actually built up a lot of the PWI institutions like Harvard and Princeton and Yale and, and all of this stuff that was built by my ancestors black Americans actually building the buildings you know putting the buildings together um, but yet and still uh, when black Americans go to those institutions they'll have better scholarships and better uh, pay you know as far as like uh, your access to uh, getting those scholarships and grants and stuff but um, the uncomfortability factor is still there compared to if a black person had gone to an HBCU. There's many people that go to HBCUs that love it. They do complain about the, the, the loans and they do complain about um, <laughs> the pay 
the tuition payment and stuff like that but they said they, their experience of of being around a bunch of black people that lo- want to learn that that are doing the sorority fraternity stuff or coming together based on like you know various clubs that they have technology clubs and uh programming clubs and acting clubs music all that just being like black like that it, it helps them navigate it gives them their confidence give them a sense because those are people that you're going to be friends with for the rest of your life too so imagine just being able to go to an hbcu where you just find a bunch of black americans that you can be friends with for the rest of your life you know and even africans they'll go and you know and go to those schools as well and they say the same i have talked to africans that went to hbcus and they say the same thing they say damn we didn't know we could find some cool ass black americans to be friends with there's not that many africans there but the ones that do go they say man i had a good time good old funky time and was able to meet some cool black americans you know that there's not the shit they saw on tv but actually see them meet them in real life and be like yo these people is down to earth they they cool they just like me you know so uh, that HBCU shit is big in our community and it should be we should continue if there's even a way you know to get more funding for these schools and, and even start continue to start shit our own universities whether they're online or whether they're uh, you know vocational whatever like I, I say why why we don't why we got historically black we, we need to still have some new shit some new black colleges <laughs> You know, and they need to be funded by the government. They do, because a lot of this shit, or we could fund it by ourselves, but what I'm saying is, a lot of this stuff where we're forcing integration is not working. And white people know that. Asians know that. Latinos know that. And even black people, we won't say it out loud, but we know it too. Forcing something that, that forcing it is forcing anything is just not good. It's just not. You don't want to force anything and that's why we have all these problems and then they got to come back and apologize and they got to come back and do diversity training come back and train all the managers get all the you know it's the same shit over and over again because it wasn't genuine from the start so you got to do what's genuine in your heart and that go for all the americans so if you are doing something i'm talking about on the board right now i'm not talking about just the black Americans. i'm talking about white americans everybody when you when you forced to do something and you're doing it when it's not genuine in your soul then that's when you have the problems. And the thing is, with the, with the black American, they genuinely don't give a shit about other people's color. That's just black people, period. We generally just don't give a shit. Like our in our genuine in our genuine hearts, we can get along with other people because we don't feel insecure around other people. Um, another, we don't we don't project our insecurities onto people based on race. We got other shit, but that's just not one of them. But other people cannot help but do that. They they it, like white people. They are really obsessed with that shit, and um, and they hearts. They not genuine with that integration stuff. They not genuine with that diversity. And I can feel it. I've been in, in classes where I was literally the only black person, and we we're talking about how can we be more inclusive? How can we be? Do I even want that? I used to say that. Like, who 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 said that black people want to be included in your shit? I say just like that. Who who's to say? And why why are we for you? You sound like it. Sound like y'all forcing it. I used to say. I said. Yeah, for one, it's a, this is a random ass conversation because they will be feeling guilty how I will be getting treated and isolated, which I wouldn't be giving a fuck. But it's like, my thing is, if that's not in your heart, who gives a fuck? My thing is, have it have it equitable where every group can have 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 their own organizations, have their own shit, and it be funded the same or, or given the same opportunity. Opportunity is where is what is is what we should be focused on as everybody equal opportunity not equal outcome to stop forcing shit that's the problem like y'all probably get mad at me but when david ike was talking about that shit about everybody should have equal opportunity to pursue their greatest potential that's how you do that that's how you that's you won't fix racism but that's how you you won't fix racism with that but that's how you will make it more balanced you're not gonna fix racism but at least if every if everybody got equal opportunity because they're gonna be people that means that funding and, and all this weird systematic hierarchy shit all that would have to go and you will fix it that way but uh, believe it or not i didn't get to where i get by putting black on my applications because i knew that what the, what the fuck was up at the at some of these institutions where they 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 used africans to fill their quota so a black american putting black american on the application i i personally think it would would hinder 
your chances of getting in because it's a bunch of uh, Nigerians and uh, people from uh, Ghana applying. You're going to accept them over you because for one, they pay it out of pocket too most of the, most of the times. So to me, it would I never put black on nothing because I just I didn't put white. I just didn't put nothing. I just I just knew with my mind and my and my mind power that I can do. I can get into this. I can do the same shit. And get the same interview. That's how you have to do it. But equal opportunity means that that shit wouldn't matter at all. Equal opportunity, not equal outcome. Forcing shit together and all this quota shit and all that is not working. How can y'all not see that that shit is not working in America? Like, it's, it's weird as hell. So we sitting here talking about, oh, diversity and multiculturalism. Forcing the conversation with white people, and we all talking, and you should see how white people they be. When I used to be in these conversations, I wouldn't say. I would just be like, I honestly don't even care to be included. I just, to me, the onus is not on me to tell y'all. Well, what can what can we do to leave me the fuck alone? Leave my people alone. Let us do our own shit, just like you do your own shit. But my thing is, my community is so stripped of resources and so stripped of shit. We don't have no choice but to be we be forced into the job market and forced into shit with y'all when we should have just had our own shit and that's how all communities feel low key that's why you have uh certain areas where there's just nothing but koreans there's enough little china little italy little ethiopia little senegal a lot of people don't know that there's a little senegal i've been there and dated senegalese men so i know what's going on too and in, in those little towns um what else uh, a, a place where they won't have it called Little India, but I've been in blocks where it's nothing but just Indians, and they own all the shit over there. Like I went to a place, it wasn't called Little Korea, but I will go over there. You know, they got the um, Korean food and shit. Not, no, not. This is before the Korean food got popular with the uh, bulgogi and uh, uh, you know that 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 Korean fried chicken shit. This was before that. These motherfuckers been supporting their own. You should see how they they'll buy up a block and they be having they they be having their own grocery store be Korean owned. So, other groups get to do that, but when the black Americans start to think about that and start to want to do that, everybody gets a, a bug in their ass. That's weird. That's what I'm saying. Like, everybody know we the tribe of Judah. Everybody know is jealous as fuck, and everybody know who we really are. That's why they get so upset when we want to do our own thing, be proud of ourselves, and love ourselves. They get upset and jealous and be like, y'all supposed to be still be thinking about us or have low self-esteem. No, get the fuck out of here with that shit. You got your own shit. Yeah, it's, I've been at a uh, little, like, say a place like in Lackawanna. There's nothing but Arabs over there. No, I mean, they might not. They might be from Yemen, you know. But, you know, it's just a whole group. Of them, and they got their own shit. And they all live amongst each other. And they be owning them corner stores and shit. So why is it a problem when we want when we want something? Why is it a problem? Jews, you should see how they, 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 they really... I had plenty of Jewish mentors. And that helped me along the way. And, and and have done a lot. I would say more than any other group. But what I would say is. I've seen. I've been in their house and stuff. Seen how they roll. I've looked at you go anywhere in their bathroom. Anywhere. All the stuff that's there. Is from other Jewish people. The food. Toothpaste. Can't. All this shit. I'm looking at the names of this stuff. And even. Like. One of the, one of the professors. We would have to read a book. You know how they make us get books. We all know that they will make us get those books. And do you know uh, that every book that this professor uh, made us get for class will be by a Jew? And she was Jewish and will be by another Jewish person. Every single book. And we would have to get like six books. And she was a teacher for like 30 years. So she had been doing that for 30 years. Putting money in her own people's pockets for 30 years. Is there anything wrong with that? No. No. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I was impressed by that. She was she was a mentor to me, and I was just like, "What kind? Like this is what everybody is doing." But like when a black American try to do it, here y'all come trying to hit us over the fucking head, and and, can't, and say divisive and oh my gosh, you guys are being so you causing problems. Y'all motherfuckers got your own shit. Everybody got their own stuff. I've been a little China. I hung out with a Chinese person before. They, they, they just got over here. I couldn't really damn speak good English that good. Parents sent her over here and pay for, you know, one of them real nice apartments over in Manhattan. And we went out. And, I, you know, this stuff, y'all got y'all own shit. Like, y'all really are sticking to y'all own. Some of y'all don't even learn English. Like, people come over here and won't even learn the language and just be with their own people in America. 
they can shop they can shop they got their own stores and stuff they got their own groceries law, lawyers doctors i've seen that doctor for, law, law firms all, all that and i don't we don't hate on that that's the thing with the black american you ask the black american is that wrong they're gonna say no they don't care do we do we try to stop y'all from doing y'all shit no no one cares but when a black american do something here y'all come hating that's why i'm saying it's something deeper there i i have looked at the maps of where my people have come from i have also looked at so i have looked at some shit that's in museums and they, it was not they did not just randomly go to certain places and start snatching up africans they went to a very specific place to get them and they went to a very specific place to enslave the ones that were already over here and they think that a lot of us don't know that if i was to tell y'all the truth about who the black american is they're not gonna believe me anyway so i don't give a fuck that was gonna have to be revealed to you eventually it's gonna be revealed to you at least by 2024 is when y'all realize what the fuck is going on um but this 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 obsession with trying to keep us down is deeper it's spiritual and until the black american realize who they have always been and who they always are they just it's just gonna keep happening because who you are is for one so out so much out there that you won't even believe it yourself so i'm not about to go out on, on a limb trying to wake all y'all up and y'all gonna ostracize me and, and get and, and do me like how y'all did a, a nigga recently a, a, somebody recently who's in jail sitting right now after trying to help y'all and y'all call him age and all this stuff y'all ain't gonna be doing that shit to me y'all won't even get a chance but a lot of this stuff that we see going on with the black american is due to a uh, spiritual spiritual warfare and my thing is africans y'all should have had our backs and y'all should have showed us love y'all still have an opportunity to change all of this around as far as the relationship between um me the black american and you you still have an opportunity to change that around because we don't have no problem with you but we, i'm gonna be bringing that home too i'm gonna be bringing some shit about that home too but that was a tangent but just know black american series hbcus uh underfunded always have been education has always been underfunded public schools have always been a public uh, underfunded and instead of forcing the forcing it integration as far as in the school systems when no one is happy white people do not want to integrate oh my gosh i have no idea the stuff i have saw growing up i've been in schools where majority white and i'm telling you i've seen letters like i was one of them nosy ass motherfucking kids let me tell you this real quick i went to a school that was like kind of brand new it was just built we were the first students in that bitch and it was a lot of white kids because the school was it was a cool school it was like it was in a um it was like in a white area so it was a lot of white kids that went but it was a lot of niggas that went too because i don't know how they did it but they got the buses it really didn't matter where you live like some of us it took us literally 40 50 minutes just to get to school in a, in a bus that's how this school was where they let you in based on lottery but this was like grade school and they will let your ass in but they were only they were picking and choosing certain black kids they were but anyways it was us we were allowed to get in there and we went and i would be a nosy ass kid if i saw letters if i saw paperwork laying around that was my nature we talking about 10 11 12 <laughs> i would i i, I, I could tell y'all some shit man i was even so nosy that i would I, I actually hid in a teacher's closet just to hear what the fuck they was talking about like they would have meetings and i would know they would have meetings and i would be a motherfucker that would no lie i had a friend do it with me we hid in a, in a teacher's uh closet before if i have some stories for days and this shit like I, I, it is it is so crazy we hid and wanted to listen to what the fuck they was talking about and then this we heard that they was gonna start ciphering us off based off of reading level test us whatever level you was at is where the fuck you go and no lie so if you in fourth grade and you had a seventh grade reading level here you go in the classroom with the seventh graders if you're in the fourth grade and you're in the second grade you're going with the second graders I, I, I was i heard that conversation then i saw a, a parent a white lady bring a letter and i wanted to see what the fuck she wrote in that letter I, that's how nosy i was as a kid i was always an investigator gadget so i mean i saw that letter go in a certain desk you know you know and i saw her close the, the teacher close it up and when everybody went to lunch i act like i was in the line hey hey ha, ha you know act like we going you gonna close the door jen I, I act like I was um, going to be the last person out. I closed that shit, hurried up, and ran and read that letter. That letter was so motherfucking racist. 
She said, I don't want my kids around those Negroes. Do they even like learning? She was just like, is there a way y'all could separate the classes based on race? Straight up. She was like, I will be fighting this. I will be going to the superintendent. I had no idea that my daughter was going to class with so many Negroids. Mind you, it wasn't that many of us in there. But she was just like, I, I don't even think they want to learn. They're going to ruin her education. That was what the fucking letter said. I was in fourth grade when I did that shit. It was a fourth or fifth. Might have been fifth. But I remember sneaking and reading that goddamn letter. And I was telling people. Actually, <laughs> I was a messy bitch. <laughs> um, I, was, I did tell the black kids. It wasn't was even that much of us. But I did tell them. I was like, yo. I, you know, the, the girl's mother, I said, she was racist. And someone went and actually asked her about it. She was like, did somebody ask her, like, is your mother racist? And she, the girl admitted, she said, she say stuff about black people that I don't like. And she, you know, cause we were young. So she did say, yeah, she's like, she, she say stuff that I don't like about black people. I don't like it. I have heard her say stuff like that. And we never, she didn't know that I had read that letter. Cause I had did it in a way where I told people what, what the, what, what the, she said, but I didn't put, get myself in trouble. Where somebody can go say, well, oh, she went in your desk and read the letter. She went in your, you know, because then I'd get in trouble. So I had said it to the black people where they couldn't go and rat me out. The black, other black kids. We were, I mean, we were kids. And where one of them black kids got offended enough and just went and go at, is your mom racist? You know? So I let them know, like, we got to actually buckle down and do our fucking work. Because we were smart as fuck. You know, we, we, we were smart as hell. Like, to this day, everybody that was in that class is pretty much doing really good for themselves because they did cipher us off they didn't do it based off race but they definitely did it based off iq and intelligence and they were giving us tests they, these motherfuckers was testing us these were not state tests i know what a state this was no damn state test these motherfuckers was testing us and putting us in groups based off of our math skills reading it was called sfa class we had to take sris we had to take benchmarks how about i don't know this stuff and where did this stuff come from we were taking benchmarks every week and you could tell, like, we, the black kids, we, we, we was doing really good. Because I said, this is what they're going to be testing us. They're going to be putting us in classes based off this shit. And they did. You can ask my friends to this day. They put us based, they put us in classes based off of intelligence. Straight up. And I was, we were in advanced class. I, I was, you know. And there were black people in that advanced class. And, but I was telling my friend, people I cared about, look, do your motherfucking work. Because I know when black kids, all, 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 all kids could do the work. But black and white kids, they'd be bored at school. So I would tell all of them, we got to actually, you know, don't don't get swallowed up by the system. Because I was the one, I was the motherfucker sneaking in teachers uh, uh, office to read letters, hiding in closets to, to get privy to conversations, all types of shit. At 11, 12, 10 years old, that's just was the motherfucker I was. I would go back and tell my friends. I would even try to get convince my friends to come and do some snoopery uh, uh, to, to do it with me. And some did, you know. And that's just how, that's just the kid I was. So I'm telling you now, these white people, they don't really want their kids around y'all. And, and we don't want to accept it. I've seen how these parents were. We went to those parents' conferences and, and showed up. And we've seen how we got treated. And that is ridiculous. So all I'm saying, when I make, when I make this part, this video in particular, all I'm saying is we got some real thinking to do as American people as to how we really want to really make change and, and make uh, equal opportunity. And it's not going to be just forcing each other to sit in a classroom together. Because I've read that letter. And it didn't hurt my feelings. I remember not giving a fuck. I remember thinking like, your daughter is dumb as fuck. I'm way smarter than that bitch. That's what I was thinking in my head. Like, black people is not... What did y'all get? I don't know where y'all get this from. That's why y'all have to spend a hundred years making a law saying that black people can't read and write but it's like where do y'all get off thinking that y'all smart like <laughs> there are smart people in every race there are dumb motherfuckers in every race but to just generalize man and it's like where do y'all get off just generalizing a group of people as oh this this group is historic is is dumber and this group is more smarter like y'all kill me with that shit and i've been around every single last type of people on this planet and you cannot judge based off of the race not even culture because i meet people that from very elite cultures pedigrees and all that stuff and they they be dumb as a bag of rocks had everything thrown at them went to the best private schools you could ever think of and they they still not as intellectual as my ass and as other black people even from the hood okay so that that bullshit gotta stop where we where we just try to um 
automatically think, oh, the black people, no, hell, hell no. Give everybody equal opportunity and we'll see. That's why we're not doing it because everybody know, everybody know what's going to happen. So that's why it's like, oh, let's just force it. Let's just do things to placate black Americans so they shut up and stop marching and stuff and stop complaining. When nothing, when nothing's gonna get done, instead of having them build up their own communities and and them wanting to build up their own communities to just figure it out on their own, whether that's through homeschooling and starting their own little schools up, you know. So this is the education one. We got more. I, I this one is big for me because I actually uh, enjoy education, and I'm a big component of education uh, of educating kids. I make curriculums for little tiny black kids. So I do like to teach the kids in my family. I'm giving them a nice little curriculum. Like I make it out for them and teach it to them for free. I don't care how long it takes either. And these kids, they grow up with knowledge itself and they grow up a wiser and stronger. But I still got to, they still go to public school because they're not homeschooled. So I still got to combat that as well. And even I try to, you know, uh, homeschool like uh, kids in my family that's not mine, but they're not my kids. So how, you know, then it's overstepping boundaries. And then, you know, they got these, a lot of people, I don't know how to say this, but one of my family members, they still have a ghetto mindset. They have a nigga mindset. So all this homeschool and all this stuff and, and all that, they ain't got time for all that. It's like send this motherfucker to a public school while I go to work. Simple as that. Where, you know, I believe that we should have, you know, black kids be a homeschool. And if you can't homeschool them yourself, outsource that shit. Outsource it to people like me. And if you could find other black people that are like that, then you can take more control back of what your kids are learning and what they're actually doing. So I have a very different outlook on education. I don't like how I feel forced. I feel like everything is forced in society and that's weird to me. And I know white people feel it too. And it's not a good feeling to, to feel bothered by people, to, to feel tolerated. Shit, if every, everybody could be respectful towards one another and you don't have to force yourself to to force it you know so that's all i'm saying when it comes to the education shit and i'm gonna talk to y'all later stay tuned for the next video in the black american series which we're going to be talking about health care now that's a big one health care is big so we're going to be talking about that and i'm gonna talk to y'all later bye